Good night. Good evening. Thank you for joining us um, tonight. Uh, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. My name is Dr. Elise Kramer. I'm an optometrist. Um, I, I trained in Canada um, and then I did my residency here in, in Florida um, and I specialize in contact lenses. So um, one really hot topic now in contact lens management um, or contact lens practice is myopia management. And so um, because it's something a little bit new um, and we have very uh, amazing technologies available through Spectrum uh, that are available to you as well. And so um, we're gonna be focusing on myopia management and some of the interventions that are available to you uh, for, for management. So the objectives here are just to introduce uh, basically what myopia management is to you, uh, talk about a little bit about evidence-based optometry, the importance, uh, review different uh, treatments, interventions, and myopia management, and also analyze some of the challenges of um, creating this type of specialty in private practice. So uh, what is myopia management? And I really like this quote. It's a subspecialty in the management of myopia within a practice is an opportunity to better educate patients and their families about the implications of progressive myopia, evaluate patients and select the most appropriate treatments. So we know that myopia is a worldwide epidemic and I think everyone is familiar with what a worldwide epidemic is especially now with the coronavirus um, it's a pandemic and obviously it's hard to compare you know exactly the coronavirus to myopia because the coronavirus is a it can be deadly and of course it's contagious um, it's a virus but um, myopia is something that affects everybody all around the world and we know that you know in Australia it's about 30 percent um, and you know in South America and Central America it's about 30 or more and in, in North America it's about 30 or more and we know that the main issue is really in, in Asia where we have almost a hundred percent of the continent really becoming myopic and we know that myopia is one of the leading causes of visual impairment worldwide. So our job as eye care specialists, as eye care practitioners, is to prevent um, the destruction of eye health from myopia. And so that's really what we need to do. So some facts by Holden and colleagues in 2016 um, was that 1.9 billion people with myopia uh, worldwide or 28.3% uh, of the world's population. But by 2050, it's projected that about 5 billion or 50% of the world's population will be nearsighted or myopic. In 2010, 2.7% of the world's population had myopia. And again, in 2050, we're looking at 9.8% of the population or 1 billion with high myopia. So myopia increases the risk of pathologies and that's why we're so interested in stopping the progression. Myopic macular degeneration, uh, if you have a patient that's about minus five, that's a risk that's about 41 times higher than someone who does not have, so someone, an emetrope. Retinal detachment is another um, a pathology that can develop because of myopia. At minus five, the risk is about nine times higher than an emetrope, and cataracts about three times higher than an emetrope. So, First, in order to understand how we can stop the progression, we have to understand what myopia is. So what um, causes myopia? Um, basically, there can be genetic causes. So if you have one or both parents with myopia, we know that there, it does tend to run in families. Environmental causes, so prolonged reading or short distance work, greater accommodative lag, and less hours outdoors. And this is important. So we know, for example, looking here at the seasons, we know, uh, for example, in winter, um, in, in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, in winter, the progression of myopia is higher. 
And that is because in winter, um, you know, people stay indoors longer. And because people stay indoors, uh, they spend less time outdoors. And because of that, we have more progression. Same thing if we compare urban uh, locations to rural locations, we see that there is more progression of myopia in uh, urban locations. And that has to do, again, with people spending less time outdoors. And rural people work on are outside, on farms, um, and other uh, are outdoors and therefore um, there's less progression. Risk factors in the development and progression of myopia. So again, time spent outdoors, time spent on near work, uh, binocular problem, other physical attributes. Age, um, so we know that younger children, it's a little bit more aggressive. Initial refractive error, so the higher uh, the refractive error at the beginning, um, the more aggressive the progression would be. Uh, current progression, parental myopia, as I mentioned, and ethnicity as well. And so again, what we really want to do is try to correct myopia. And so there's a few ways we can do that. Um, we can do that with glasses, with contact lenses, with um, refractive surgery. But again, what's more interesting is actually stopping myopia and not just correcting it because anyone can correct it. But really what we want to do is slow down the progression. So what do we do at an initial consultation? You have the patient come in, take a family history, uh, talk about near work, how much time are you spending outdoors, age of onset or progression if they already are myopic, of course, visual acuity, binocular vision, corneal topography, intraocular pressure, and just looking at the front of the eye. All the rest of those are really to rule out another problem. So for example, a patient with keratoconus would have high myopia, but that might not be irregular myopia. That's a myopia due to the curvature of the front surface, irregular curvature of the front surface of the eye. So you really want to establish what type of myopia it is. Is it a myopia due to a secondary, um, you know, uh, cause or is it, is it just myopia? So that's important. They want to assess the risk. So you want to look if the patient does not have myopia, um, have an increased risk of onset if their parents are myopic, um, ethnicity, so East Asian, near work, and limited time outdoors. But if they already have myopia, you want to assess what is the risk that these people are going to progress. So less than nine years old, Again, parents, uh, what the refractive error is and ethnicity are all risk factors. So if you do have myopia, um, there's a, you, you could choose, you can choose an intervention, a, a myopia control strategy. So you want to look at what the risk of progression is, the effectiveness of, of, of the strategy and to see if you have it available in your country. And of course, there's two options. There's no control and there's control. So I mentioned correction, which would just be regular glasses or contact lenses, single vision distance. And of course, if you wanna do myopia control, there's many different technologies available, such as in, in soft contact lenses, we have multifocal uh, center distance lenses, extended depth of focus lenses, orthokeratology, um, also progression addition spectacles, bifocals, peripheral defocused spectacles, and then uh, pharmacological treatment, which would be atropine, or even combination of therapy where you can combine one of the contact lenses with a pharmacological agent. Um, and then of course, if the patient does not have myopia, what we want to do is reduce the risk. So, you know, obviously we can't change who their parents are. So if their parents are myopic, they have a higher risk. We can't change their ethnicity. But what we can do is increase the time they're spending outdoors. And of course, uh, recommend frequent breaks from near work. So how do we want to manage myopia progression? Again, with spectacles, we have these three, which I already mentioned, uh, contact lenses. Uh, we really have multifocal soft lenses um, and then orthokeratology, uh, which are gas permeable lenses. And then atropine, 
Um, obviously, 1% atropine does work, but it's not something that we recommend um, because of all the side effects that 1% atropine has. Um, low dose atropine is really what we do, what we use, what we recommend using for myopia management. Um, there's various different concentrations. This talk tonight is not focused on atropine, but I'm sure we will talk more about this in, in another uh, webinar. And again, combination of treatments um, is, is what I, uh, I mentioned already. So follow up, of course, it depends on the type of treatment that you're doing. Um, uh, if you're doing orthokeratology, you definitely want to see the patient the next day after starting uh, ortho -K. But um, you know, you definitely want to see these patients more frequently than um, a regular patient, a patient that you're, you're not doing um, myopia management on. And you can see that with drops and contact lenses, we're following them one week, one month, three months, and so on. And with if they're wearing glasses, I mean, every six months is probably good enough. And of course, this varies based on the treatment. But if you are um, doing uh, like orthokeratology, you definitely want to uh, do corneal topography at your follows. Um, you want to do intraocular pressure and fundus examination. You can't forget the rest of the eyes. So. Uh, this is just a slide showing you what, you know, that basically you should be following your patients a little bit more closely. So what are some of the challenges of starting myopia management in your office? So we, we do encourage you to do myopia management, but we're not ignorant of the fact that it's not, you know, it's easier said than done. Um, basically, one of the main challenges is public awareness. And how do we convince and make parents and patients understand the importance of myopia management? Um, it's hard because a lot of things are not FDA approved. And, and even though you guys may not have the FDA, it's still something that gives treatments a lot of power uh, all, all around the world. Um, Off-label uses and of course, risks and benefits. Um, so, Again, it's really important to educate our patients, educate them as much as possible, teach them what myopia is, teach them you know, what the pathologies are, um, what, why it's beneficial for their kids to start a treatment. And um, of course, it's important to have informed consent. So here is an example of an informed consent that I give um, in my office. And if you want a copy of this, you're welcome to email me um, later and I'm, I would definitely be happy to send this to you. But this is just basically explaining what the possible side effects are of each of the different treatments and you just have them sign at the bottom, even though a lot of these side effects are rare. So um, another thing is multifocal, bifocal spectacles on kids. The effectiveness is, is debatable for sure. And of course, there's the aesthetic concern um, and bullying uh, in, in glasses. So obviously, we're, we're really interested in contact lenses. Um, but of course, this is, depends on availability. Of course, thanks to Spectrum, we have this available in a lot of countries throughout the world. Um, and uh, like I said, for multifocal soft contact lenses, we only have a few around the world, like the Milo by Markenovi. Um, and um, but they do have a wide range of parameters, so it's a it's a great lens. And um, sometimes pediatric populations require a little bit more. So um, contact lenses in kids, uh, I think orthokeratology is is a really great treatment. Um, unfortunately, none of them are FDA approved for myopia management. They're FDA approved for overnight wear, for the correction of myopia, but none of them really right now for myopia management. Obviously, wearing contact lenses at night does increase your risk of, of developing infection, but um, I find as long as you educate your patients properly on hygiene, um, and proper care of, of their lenses. Um, I have never had a patient develop an infection. And, and you know, these can be costly, so it depends on um, you know, the, the people you have in their budget. Um, again, atropine, this isn't available everywhere. Uh, again, not FDA approved for myopia management. Uh, the availability, compounding, pharmacies, might make uh, formulations that are different from each other. And of course, there's the whole debate about what 
percentage concentration to use. And, um, and there's always the risk of having uh, side effects, even with low dose. Um, so some of the side effects that are possible are allergies, uh, sensitivity to light, and the rebound phenomenon, which is basically when you stop the drop, the myopia progresses more than it would have if you, if you hadn't used atropine. And then again, this is just a graph from one uh, study compared to different concentrations. In the study, you can see the blue line at the top showing that um, 0.05 atropine is actually most effective in, in slowing the uh, progression of or the growth of axial length. And so um, that, according to the study, is probably the most effective concentration. So we need to train our patients. That's another challenge. Um, vision therapy, soft contact lenses, orthokeratology, how to put them in, how to take them out. These are children. So obviously, you know, the learning curve might be a little steeper uh, for them. And of course, if they're using drops, you have to add this into their daily routine. So what um, instrumentation uh, do I recommend, do we recommend for myopia management, topography? is definitely something uh, very useful for orthokeratology. A or B scans, if you can, this helps measuring the axial length. It's not mandatory for um, you know, monitoring the progression of myopia, but it certainly is very, very helpful. Uh, fundus camera and OCT, uh, just, you just keep on a check, you wanna check on the back of the eye, especially in patients with really, really high myopia. Um, they're going to be at risk of developing issues um, like glaucoma and retinal problems. And then this is something that you can market. So you can announce to other providers and just um, put on your website that you're doing this type of, of thing in your practice. And um, you can probably get a lot of patients that way. Again, axial length is, is one of the most important measurements uh, in myopia management. Of course, um, it's not available in a lot of practices, uh, in most like general practices, but I don't have any way of, of measuring axial length in my practice. So it would definitely be a great bonus to have, but it's not absolutely mandatory uh, to do uh, myopia management. Uh, another thing is, you know, the cost. So a lot of these are additional costs in addition to, you know, regular glasses or regular contact lenses. A lot of these are more expensive um, and sometimes insurance is not going to cover myopia management. So the question is, is this standard of care or a specialty? And I really think it should be standard of care because, um, you know, this is a pandemic. It's, it's affecting the whole world. And I think we all, because we're eye care specialists, we need to protect the eyes of our patients. And certainly um, we should implement myopia management in our practices. So I want to talk to you tonight about uh, wonderful technology, um, orthokeratology called Euclid. It's the emerald lens. And um, this is what the lens looks like. So you have different curves. You have the back optic zone radius, which is the, 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 you know, obviously the optic zone, the zone that's going to flatten that front surface central, um, part. And, um, and then you have the reverse curve where the epithelial cells will accumulate and you have the alignment curves and the peripheral curves, which are important for comfort, for centration of the lens. So how do we choose um, what kind of patient uh, to do this treatment on? Uh, these, we, we talked about patient evaluation, but basically the best candidates that use, you could see on the right side are gonna be patients who have K readings between 40 and 46, minimum corneal diameters of 11, and you want to really aim for patients that are up to five diopters if you want full correction. Astigmatism, and this is important, up to 1.5 diopters with the rule or up to 0.75 diopters against the rule. 
Um, and you want that astigmatism to be less than half of the spherical power. So if the astigmatism is higher than the spherical power, they're not, they're really not great candidates for this treatment. But you can still find a lot of patients that uh, would be really great candidates. And this is just to show you all the different numbers that we look at with the image key on the right. And when you receive a lens, these are all the parameters you're going to receive. So you can really understand what you're getting. So the range of parameters that we can get with the Euclid Emerald lens is amazing. We have base curves between 7.3 and 10.15. You have three different diameters, as you can see on the right, um, for all different shapes and sizes of eyes. Um, you have different curvatures and of course there's different materials all of these have very high decay remember that these are lenses that patients are sleeping with overnight so we want to make sure that they're breathable and uh, reduce the risk of infection so this is what it should look like um, you you really want to have uh, a bullseye pattern as you can see here with four to five millimeters of central alignment and adequate 360 degree edge lift. Um, the, the visual acuity with the lenses on should actually be 2020. And when you put that lens on, you do an over refraction, it should only be plus or minus a half. And the lenses should move a little bit, but only about half to one millimeter uh, with blinking. So when you follow up um, your patients, remember you wanna see them the next day, you wanna see them also one week later, um, and you wanna see, when you see them at the beginning, you wanna see them within two hours of waking up. This is because you want to see if there's any lens alteration that should be made. Patients um, so should remove their lenses when they wake up, and then after um, come directly to your office. But then you have your one month and six month follow-up exams in which you really wanna see your patient toward the end of the day. And the reason for that is because you wanna make sure that the effect of the treatment that you're doing lasts six to eight hours after you remove the lens. And then after you see them at the six month appointment, you could see them annually after that. So what do you do in these follow-ups? Um, you want to check the vision without lenses. You want to see, make sure that the treatment is working. You do a manifest refraction um, without lenses, of course. You can also do it with lenses if you set over a refraction. Slit lamp exam, of course, topography, very important. Um, I like the difference map a lot because you can look at the change between the previous appointment and the new appointment, and you could see that treatment zone, and you can make sure the treatment is actually happening. Um, so again, the topography should display about four to five millimeters uh, centered treatment zone, which is exactly what you're looking for with this four to five millimeters of central alignment. So when do you actually make a change? You don't make a change until you have the patient wearing the lens at least every night for a week. Um, the lenses need some time to establish their position. And um, some patients have a little bit of trouble at the beginning. Uh, the first night or two, they have trouble sleeping or um, you know they're nervous about it. And so this can definitely affect centration. Um, and you really don't wanna make changes until uh, the symptom that they have is repeatable at two or more visits. Um, and again, remember that if the patient is not sleeping well, the lens might decenter. So that's important. And you always want to base your decisions to make a change on your topography changes. Um, so don't change it based on your fluorescein evaluation. Um, remember that the eyelid will interfere with centration, especially in Asian's eye, Asian eyes because of the tight lid. So if you have consistent poor vision, um, it may be due to lens centration or it might be also due to cylinder that is just not being corrected. So a uh, smiley face is, is one of the things you might see and on your topography, as you can see here in the image. And that just means that the lens is a little too high. 
um, so the lens is loose. So you really want to tighten that lens to achieve centration so you can steepen the alignment curve. And of course the lab and spectrum will work with you to make these changes. Frown face is, is the opposite. So this happens when the lens is riding low. Um, generally this is a lens that's too tight. So you want to flatten uh, the alignment curve by 0.1. And again, we're here to help you with that. Central Island is something um, that is, is just a lens that um, can be well centered, but is just maybe too, too tight. So you might want to flatten the reverse curve. Um, and if the lens is low, um, it's probably caused by a tight lens. So of course it depends on how the lens is fitting, but you can get these central islands, which can be uh, fixed as well. Sometimes your lens um, can move to the right or to the left, so nasally or temporally. Um, this is called lateral decentration, and this is what you'll see on your topography. So for this, just poor centration, what you really wanna do is increase your diameter. And uh, this can also happen if you have an excess of cylinder, so a lot of astigmatism, um, either at more than 1.5 with the rule or 0.75 against the rule, um, or, uh, and also especially if it is a limbus to limbus cylinder. And uh, this can definitely affect uh, how the lens is going to fit and the centration of it. So, Basically, myopia management is a relatively young discipline, um, and the quality of evidence in myopia management is getting better every year. Um, myopia management should be standard of care, as I mentioned, and there are challenges to myopia management, just like everything else. One thing about the Euclid lens that I think is really important is that this type of lens has an extremely high rate of success um, in the first fit. So how do we fit this lens? It's really easy and you actually don't need a diagnostic set. So I think that's one of the main advantages of the Euclid lens. So you don't need a diagnostic set. All you have to do is three things. Refraction, you measure the HVID, which is the horizontal visible iris diameter, and you do a um, topography to get Ks, or you can use auto Ks or manual Ks, and you send those three things. So again, refraction, iris diameter, and, uh, take the K measurements, and with all those things, those three things, we have an 85 to 95 success rate with the first lens. And that's really all you need. So again, no fit set. All you gotta do is provide us with those three measurements and they send you the lens. And the lens has an 85 to 95% success rate with the first fit. So um, this again is just an introduction uh, to our Euclid Emerald lens, but I've been using it for a while now. And I've really had a lot of success with this lens. It's easy to use. And one more thing that I want to mention is that if you are focused on myopia management and you have a patient that has really high myopia, what you can do is use orthokeratology to correct it partially and then correct the rest with a soft lens during the day. And studies show that that has been shown to also slow the progression of myopia. So I talk about full correction. Obviously the idea is we want full correction with orthokeratology, but if you can get that because your patient has a prescription that's over minus five, you can still correct it partially and then correct the rest and still have that myopia management benefit. So with that, uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Again, you can email me also. Uh, if you want to, but I definitely think we have time for questions. Um, Dr. Davila, if you want to lead that portion. Yes, thank you very, very much, Dr. Kramer. We do have one or two or three questions. The first one will be, uh, can you repeat what measurements are needed to send to the lab to produce yeah. the lenses? 
Absolutely. So refraction, so manifest refraction is the first one. The second one is going to be K readings. So we try not to take the SIM K, but K readings, which can be obtained if you have a topographer, you can get K readings from there. You can do manual keratometry and some auto refractors will give you what's called an auto K. But what you want to do is get those K readings. Um, I think the best way to do it is with a topographer, but if you don't have that in your office, you can still measure it. And um, the HVID, which is the horizontal visible iris diameter. So to measure that, again, some top topographers will give you that, um, but you really don't need a topographer for this. You can just take a millimetric ruler, so a ruler with millimeters, um, and measure the corneal diameter, which is essentially what the HVID is. So you just measure from one side of the iris to the opposite side of the iris, and you'll get the HVID. So again, manifest refraction, K readings, uh, either from a topographer or manual or auto Ks. And for those K readings, you really want to make sure you measure them several times so that you get a very accurate um, data. And then, of course, the corneal diameter or the horizontal visible iris diameter, which is abbreviated HVID. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, we have people, let us know, we have people so far, I have seen people in the chat from Trinidad and Jamaica. I'm not sure if there are any other ECPs from any other countries, please let us know. Uh, we do have a few minutes for a few more questions if you, if you have any of those. Let us know. Also, we wanted to start, uh, uh, this is the part one of the Caribbean series. We wanted to do uh, simple webinars, uh, less than an hour, because uh, I know that you guys probably would should fed up already with too many webinars in this during these uh, two or three weeks. Uh, tonight, uh, we really appreciate Dr. Liz Kramer for being with us and presenting a brief introduction to myopia control. And yeah. thank Thank you, and then, and then we're okay, but of course, like Dr. Uh, Elise Kramer said, we're going to have more more of those different subjects discussed, uh, discussed in the different uh, uh, webinars. Uh, if you have any uh, uh, recommendations for us, we're open to, let us know uh, which other uh, would you like to discuss. The next one will be next, next week. I'm going to send you guys the uh, invitations probably today or tomorrow. Uh, next week, I'm uh, going to sp speak about hybrid lenses, and also scleral lenses. And our new scleral lens uh, designed by Patrick Caroline and Randy Kojima, it is called Smart Lens. And then a little bit about hybrid lenses, the Synergize platform. So, uh, uh, but one thing, Dr. Davila, is that a lot of people don't want to start with orthokeratology because they're afraid, you know, it's going to be extra cost for their office. Um, but one thing I just want to remind you is that the Euclid lens, the Emerald lens, does not require a fit set. So all you need to do is send in those three measurements that I, I went over, and you can get the lens for the patient. So there's no initial investment uh, for your practice, uh, which I think is a really huge advantage. Exactly, that's, uh, that's a very important aspect of it. And also, all, all these lenses are warranted. So in case they, they, don't, they don't fit or whatever that happens, you can all, you, can, you, you don't have to have the fear of losing money out of the transaction because we can always uh, actually return them. So we have consultants from you, uh, directly from Spectrum and uh, consultants from, from Euclid. Uh, also like, like Dr. Kramer, like Dr. Kramer said, we have also the warranties, and of course, you don't need you don't need a whole set in order to actually fit these lenses. You can fit them empirically with the uh, different measurements that Dr. Kramer uh, explained to us. So let me see if there's any. Uh, I don't know if they have any. Uh, no more questions here. Uh, let us know if you have any, any more of those. If yeah. Um, and like I said, you guys can email us or, um, you know, reach out, don't hesitate. If you guys have questions, you want to get started, but you forgot something, um, these webinars are archived and available for you. 
Um, but of course, we're happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, also, like, like Dr. Kremer said, we have a YouTube channel. You can go to uh, YouTube and uh, look for, in the search area, look for Spectrum International. You can subscribe to our channel there. Uh, we have been doing, we have, think, we have done at least, at least uh, a dozen already webinars, and they're almost every one of those are already uh, on, on our channel. So if you want to later on review those uh, webinars, you can do so at your own time. This one will be uh, posted in the next 24 hours. I think we have one. Dr. Davila, do, in order to fit um, the Emerald Lens, do they have to do the certification? Yes, that is, that's important. If you guys, any, any, any ortho K lenses, in order to do that, you need to get certified. Uh, but do not worry, it's a very simple certification, but still it is an, an FDA requirement. Uh, write to us, or don't worry, anyone, we already, since you are already uh, here on, on this list. I could, I could show them how to do it really quick if you want. Sure, sure, let's do that, we have, we have time. Yeah, so let me just show you how to get certified. Um, let me just, I'll share my screen again. Yeah, share your screen. Dr. Kramer is going to uh, show you how to, uh, 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 where to go in order to get certificated. Yeah, so let me just share this with you. Uh, hold on a second. It is, it is a no hassle transaction, very simple. Uh, all you have to yeah. do is take a little course and then cool. uh, and then answer a, 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 a small a small quiz and that's it. So you go to Euclid uh, S Y S uh, dot com um, and you click here. You see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay, so you click here where it says for practitioners, and then again, if you want to learn more, you can learn more, um, and they'll, you'll see all the information that I really went over in detail. But of course, if if there's anything you forgot or want to learn about, you can read about it. But you just click get certified, um, and and then go to this page over here. This is me, um, and you could see that my status is active. But from here, let me see if I can find it for you uh, or maybe if I log out let me see so um, let me see back to Emerald here so you yeah. can register okay so basically when if you if I hadn't been logged in I would have been here and you just put your first and, and last name and you register and then it's going to send you an email and then you get a, a number candidate number and then you can easily do the certification exam uh, the certification exam is super easy it's an open book exam you can take it many times if you need to but basically it's like a PowerPoint presentation very similar to the one I just did the only difference is that afterwards you just have to answer questions and then you answer them and you can easily uh, just get certified and they send you a sort of a certificate which you can actually hang in your office if you want to and that's all you need to work with Emerald so very simple I don't let this uh, procedure intimidate you it's it's really straightforward and easy to do yes it is it is very simple and of course it's, it's in english already so you don't have to don't do not worry you don't have to do it in spanish <laughs> it will be simple for you uh and, that, so and, that, and that's it we have another question um yeah. it's about uh uh follow up so yes. let me um go to my slides here and I'll just show you again uh, what we recommend. So if you're talking about orthokeratology, uh, let me just go back here. So of course, it depends on the treatment you're doing um, for, uh, this is a great slide, and this is from the Brian Holden uh, Vision Institute. So, um, you can see here share it you have to oh, share. Yeah. don't see okay i'm sorry i thought you saw it. hold on one second hold on. Ah, you're not seeing okay so you can see here um perfect you can see here our follow-up schedule. Uh, so again, this is recommended by the Brian Holden Vision Institute and uh, the SEED uh, study. 
uh, which is the supporting your vision. Uh, it's, a, it's a study that was done in, in Japan. Um, and so you could see here, atropine is represented uh, by the drop. So we're gonna focus on these contact lenses um, with his orthokeratology. So this is the follow-up schedule for myopia management, not for orthokeratology, okay? I'll explain to you what the difference is. So if you have a patient in orthokeratology in the Emerald Euclid lens, you wanna see them every week, oh, at the first week, at the one month mark, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. And that's to make sure that the myopia is not progressing. But if we're talking about orthokeratology and it's a new patient that's starting orthokeratology, you need to see them the following day after starting orthokeratology. That's the only thing that needs to be added here is the first day because you want to make sure that the lens is not causing any damage. You want to make sure that it's starting to work. And then you see them again one week later, and then again one month later, and then you could see them three or six months um, as well. So um, that's what I recommend for the follow-up schedule. Excellent. Any, any more questions? Remember, uh, this is going to be on our YouTube channel in the next 24 hours, so later on, if you have any doubts, you can just uh, go over there, uh, take a quick peek at it, and at your own pace, uh, uh, see it again uh, and watch it. If you have, of course, any doubts later on, you can always write us. Uh, is to, uh, uh, you can write us to, uh, I, don't worry, since I have the list, I'm going to anyway send you an email to all of you guys with the, our different addresses where you can actually write us. There's another question here. Let's see. Email contact. Let me write down the email contact at the in the chat section. It will be easier for everyone. It's going oh, to be. And you can write down my email as well. If sure. You want. Sure. For yours, and then you can be write at sales at spct inter. Yeah. If you want to order anything, email that. But if you have questions about this presentation, just email. Uh, he'll share my email with you. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think it's in the chat uh, to Nalini just asked um, what the email is and it's, he wrote it in the chat. So if you just click on chat, you'll see the email there and I will email I will write down my email as well. So if you guys have any questions, you can um, reach out to me as well. So all the if you're going if you're writing about information about spectrum, you have the uh, uh, email there. Uh, any questions regarding the uh, uh, conference? Of course, you have a list also there. Uh, any doubt or arises later on. So really happy that see, I think I have one, one more to see. Yeah, we have the email contact already. Remember, this is just the first one. We're going to have at least one more big, uh, next week. And then from there, we're going to decide how many more. I'm really happy to have you all you guys here with us uh, sharing a little bit of information regarding myopia control and, uh, and the Euclid platform. Next week, Smart Lens, our newest scleral lens and hybrid lenses, sooner guys. So I'll spec you there, uh, sh uh, share your the information with your colleagues, let, let them know, so they can ask, uh, actually get information from us. The email, yeah, uh, I wrote the email in the chat section. Can you see the chat section, uh, uh, Nalini? It's in the chat section, please verify, let me know. Yeah, she wrote, she wrote. Thank okay, you. perfect, yeah. perfect. Excellent, excellent. Very good. So thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate your attention and I hope you learned something new. I hope you're motivated to start um, orthokeratology and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Perfect. Good night. Thank night. you all. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.